they just don't get it. They just don't get it. They think that we can borrow and tax more and spend more and get us out of this problem. And no, they're obviously digging us into a deeper, darker hole, and that is insane. With their new record-busting $3.8 trillion federal budget and their trillion-dollar-plus Obamacare scheme that they had rammed through, which is the mother of all unfunded mandates, <laughs> to talk now of that huge energy tax on all of us via their cap-and-tax scheme coming down the pike. No, to keep borrowing and spending and inventing these big new government programs with enormous price tags that makes no sense. There is no way to pay for any of this except to see your taxes rise. Either the states or the Fed will have to raise taxes. Digging us further into debt. Selfishly sticking our kids and our grandkids with the bill. And that is stealing from them. It is stealing opportunity in this land of opportunity. It's immoral. It's not right. And we're not going to stand for it anymore. <laughs> because see, all of this, all of this makes us more beholden to foreign countries. It makes us less secure. It makes us less free. And I'm not calling anyone un-American, but the unintended co consequences of these actions, the results are un-American. <laughs> is, is that what Barack Obama meant when he promised the nation that they would fundamentally transform America? <laughs> Probably, actually. He warned us, he warned us with a playbook that sure seems to me like it's all Alinsky all the time. <laughs> is this what their change? <laughs> is all about. I want to tell them, nah, you know, we will keep clinging to our constitution and our guns and religion and you can keep Now we've all learned a lot of lessons, I think, in this last year. I don't want anybody to feel bad if they had supported some of those on the left in that last election because how would a lot of folks have known we had a complicit did not do its job completely. <laughs> so, not, not betting the candidates all the intentions there. Now, don't feel bad though, because most Americans were busy. We're busy in our lives, living our lives, and raising our families and running our businesses. So, how are some to know? But now we do know. That's the point. Now we do know. We know what the problem is, and now we're gonna fix the problem. <laughs> told them in polls and protests and special elections and instead of li uh, listening to us though what do they do they keep lecturing they keep apologizing for us speaking down to us and they're dividing America now we have decided that they can no longer decide what is best for us even if we don't like it even if we can't afford it even if what they're doing makes no sense they seem to want to say, well, we're going to do it anyway because, to borrow their catchphrase, their warning bill, they had said, well, yes, we can. We need to tell them that no, just because you can does not mean you should. So, folks, from now until November, when they say, yes, we can, we're going to all say, oh, no, you don't. Oh, well. 
know. Now, these are the kind of common sense conservative solutions that Americans are looking for and Americans support. And if the left doesn't have the good sense to listen to the American people, then we are going to find leaders who will. Because it is beautiful. There is a growing movement sweeping across this nation, and you are it. Socialized medicine, personality as foreign policy agenda of those who are running the show in Washington today. Some of the good folks in this great movement are registered Republicans. Some, some are what we would used to call Reagan Democrats. Some are, like most of my friends and my family, including my own husband Todd, just independent. <laughs> Apologize for being American. We know that our country has big challenges in front of us. We have a lot of work in order to right some wrongs. And the coming days, as we strive hard, especially coming into November, it may feel like we're it may feel like a running a grueling marathon, maybe like the big one that's coming up here in Boston next week. But we can do it because we're hopeful about our future, because we know that this is the greatest nation on earth, and we get to run hard, and we can win, and America's best days are yet to come. So get your second win. Get your second win, America. We still believe that America is exceptional, and we know what makes her exceptional is not her politicians, it is her people, and the values of protection of our Constitution so that the promise for a more perfect union that we are destined to become, it can live on. And we have a lot of work to do to get there together. Many steps to run before we get there. The first task is to restore balance and common sense. And the first test will be at the ballot box in November. <laughs> rooted in these time-tested truths that the government that governs least governs best. And that it is the Constitution that provides the perfect path towards our more perfect union. And that only limited government can provide the opportunity and prosperity for all. And that freedom is a God-given right and freedom is worth fighting for. America's finest are men and women in uniform. They are a force for good throughout this world, and that is nothing to apologize for. We believe that God did shed his grace on thee. We are a blessed nation. We are not going to squander this, this opportunity. These are the principles our forefathers from right here. They fought and they died for these principles. These are the principles that made this country exceptional. And it's our turn now. Boston, it's our turn to stand up and to speak out. <laughs>